Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Global crusade with Kumeyi. I'm waiting for you. We're talking about the GCK, July GCK. Can you give me the title there? Yes, I want to explain that to you. Great possibilities. If you look at that word, possibilities is in the plural. What does it mean? That every impossibility in your life and in your family, this July GCK, every one of them will bow before the Lord in Jesus' name. You know, don't look back. Don't ever say, I have been attending GC GCK crusade. No, this one is different. You know what the Lord told us? He said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given unto him. Do you believe it? Yes. This GCK will bring down every possibility, no matter their number. Every one of them will bow before you in Jesus' name. So let's prepare. As you prepare, invite the people. Tell all your neighbors. Tell all your friends about it. You know, Ogumosho is just the Alpha location. But here in Lagos, we are taking GCK Crusade to all the streets, all the streets in our com community. The people will hear it. They will be part partake of it. And the law, whatever is happening there will also be happening here in Lagos in Jesus' name. The July 2023 edition of our crusade, global crusade, comes up at Ogumosho Grammar School. Okay, Owode, Ogumosho, on your stage from Thursday, 27th July to Tuesday, 1st August, 2023, with the team Great Possibilities Through the Power of Christ. It will also feature the ministers, church workers, and professionals conference on 28th and 31st July and 1st August 2023 with the team purged for more fruitfulness. The venue for the conference is Bella Baptist Center behind Baptist High School, Ogumosho, all our workers and all our workers and workers in training are to attend the conference in our various group headquarters at 7 a.m. on every day of the conference. Let's encourage one another to be there visibly and the Lord will bless us as we gather in Jesus' name. And it's also featuring also the, in the Impact Academy for teenagers, campus top, uh, students, COPS members, and young adults on Saturday, 29th July, 2023, with the team Beyond Limitations. The program starts at 7 a.m. Publicity for these programs should be intensified and the invitation extended to all categories of people, including ministers, church workers, and professionals. Each member of the church should endeavor to come with at least two invitees to the crusade. The Lord will depend on you to do that in Jesus' name. And as you do it, the Lord will never leave you alone in Jesus' name. We want to stand up as we sing from our congregational hymn hymn number 22 gospel hymns and song number 22 
simply trusting every day, trusting through a stormy way, even when my faith is small, trusting Jesus, that is all. Brightly does this his spirit shine into this poor heart of mine. While he leads, I cannot fall. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Singing if my way be clear. Praying if the paths be drear. If in danger, for him call. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Trusting him while life shall last. Trusting him till earth be, far, be past. Till within the jasper wall. Trusting Jesus, that is all. Trusting as the moment fly. Trusting as the days go by. Trusting him wherever he befall. Trusting Jesus, that is all.
today we're going to continue with our Bible reading. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we're asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue for the reading now. The second book of Moses, called Exodus. The second book of Moses, called Exodus. Chapter 33. Chapter 33. And the Lord said unto Moses, Depart, and go up hence, thou and the people which thou hast brought up out of the land of Egypt, unto the land which I swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, saying, Unto thy seed will I give it. And I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. For I will not go up in the midst of thee, for thou art a stiff-necked people, lest I consume thee in the way. And when the people heard these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. For the Lord had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment, and consume thee. Therefore now put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. And Moses took the tabernacle, and pitched it without the camp, afar off from the camp, and called it the tabernacle of the congregation. And it came to pass that every one which sought the Lord went out unto the tabernacle of the congregation, which was without the camp. And it came to pass, when Moses went out unto the tabernacle, that all the people rose up, and stood every man at his tent door, and looked after Moses, until he was gone into the tabernacle. And it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended, and stood at the door of the tabernacle, and the Lord talked with Moses. And all the people saw the cloudy pillar stand at the tabernacle door, and all the people rose up and worshipped, every man in his tent door. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. And he turned again into the camp. But his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, and that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, Carry us not up hence, for wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. And he said, I beseech thee, Show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand, 
and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. It's time for us to give our tithes and offering. Let's remain standing. Bring out your tithe and offering and uh, raise it up as we pray together now. Father, we are very grateful for another opportunity to worship you with our tithe and offering. I pray, Lord, as we give, you will accept and receive the offering in Jesus' name. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Our leaders are passing the bags. As you drop your tithes and offering, you can sit down. No. 
now bring you power ministrations from regions, states, and nations across the world. As a runner that's been trained to run the greatest race of all time, I want to lay aside each weight of sin so I wouldn't be left behind. I want to run with a motive, with a desire in my soul, and I want to look back for nothing. I keep my eyes set fast on my goal. I will run for the prize which no man could ever give. I'm content for eternal life so nigh. I will run with my eyes set fast on the promises of God's word. I'll stay true to all the rules I've heard. Strives for the mastery, great hardness. He must endure. We must press with all that's in us. We must cry out, Lord, just once more. For 
this race is not for the swiftest, but we were chosen to endure, to receive the crown of righteousness God's promise to us. We'll be sure. I will run for the prize which no man could ever give. I'll contend for eternal lives of life. I will run with my eyes set fast on the promises of God's word. I'll stand true, true to all the rules I've heard. The author and is Jesus Christ our Lord who despite the shame endured the cross and sat down on the right hand of God now consider him who has endured such a position against himself lest I be weary and fail in my mind, I will run for the prize which no man could ever give. I'll contend for eternal lives of life. I will run with my eyes set fast on the promises of God's word. I'll stand true, true to all the rules I've heard. I will. Run for the prize which no man could ever give. I'll contend for eternal lives of life. I will run with my eyes set fast on the promises of God's word. I'll stand true, true to all the rules I've heard.
name is uh, Chief Julius Itari in university. I uh, happen to love one of the apostles. I always call him Apostle Kumugu. Each time whenever I come across, always hear from Treasure FM when he's preaching. Every time whenever he has any program, I love to hear. On the 24th of November, 2022, here at uh, Adamawa in the Northern State, as I listed in the time of prayer, he said, uh, in announce and everybody stand. Means if I follow stand in my room, I'm hearing through my oh, small yeah, radio. And fine. then I started to pray. All those who have problem, anyone who have sickness, juju anything, evil spirit, let it stand. Every kind of sickness, every kind of infirmity, he'll take away right there tonight in Jesus' name. Prostate cancer, you are killed now in Jesus' name. And he prayed. Me, myself, I believe that that night, this sickness will hold me for over 16 years. Where well, I don't go to hospital that very day, all my believe is that this sickness is moving away from me. And when he pray everything and he said is everything is finished, everything is done in the right way he want, I feel like something like that. I go to the toilet, I, I weep well and nothing touched me till today. I've received the healing through the, the one I'm calling Ikumuyi, always call him Apostle. So I have to testify to tell the Christian that the gospel we are following, we are following Christ, make we know who's who. And that's what I want to testify to tell the world. Goodness of God is running after you. Miracles running after you. The power of the Lord running after you. It will get you and meet you there in Jesus' name. Like the dynamite that broke the day from darkness at creation, the power of God through the global crusade with Kumui GCK is breaking the chains and shackles of impossibilities in the lives of millions of people across the world. The case that brought me to the campground is very grievous. Eight years insanity. I could not do anything. I can't hold a pen. Because of this sickness, I burnt my certificate, my clothes, everything that is in the house, I burnt them all. I don't know when I was doing this. My brain reacted negatively. When our dad in the Lord prayed, I fixed my heart with faith. And after the prayer with the man of God, immediately I received calmness in my brain. Brother, praise the Lord! All that Satan has taken away from you, the Lord has conquered Satan. The power of the third ignition of the GCK is spreading wild, devouring the wings and caprices of the kingdom of darkness, shredding the dungeon and cascade of impossibilities. Everywhere it goes, the strength of the Holy Ghost in the holder of this ace is being renewed daily, as he declares. I am willing. Salvation has come to me. You will see the power of the Lord walking in your life in Jesus' name. Now, the GCK train is being stationed at the ancient city of Ogumosho, Oyo State, southwest Nigeria, to show the great possibilities through the power of Christ from Thursday, 27th July to Tuesday, 1st August. 2023 at 600R GMT daily and 700R GMT on Sunday at Obumosho Grammar School, Okiwudi, Obumosho, or your states. The anointed man of God, the convener of the GCK, a chosen vessel and channel of blessing for this generation, Dr. W.F. Kumuyi, is reverberating the power of Christ 
for great possibilities with the guest music minister Jeff Dio, inspiring participants in worship and other music ministers across nations. Ministers, church workers and professionals will be purged for more fruitfulness on Friday 28th, Monday 31st July and Tuesday 1st August 2023. Time, 600 hours GMT at Beulah Baptist Centre behind Baptist High School of Womershaw. Well, Impact Academy for Children, Teenagers, Youth, Campus Students and Young Adults, Tag Beyond Limitations, will be held on Saturday, 29th July, 2023. All programs and ministrations will be broadcast live via satellite and all social media platforms, as well as designated radio and television stations across the world. Come and catch up with your miracle. GCK, the gospel to every creature. Mark chapter 10, we're looking at verse 17. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? He came running. That's good. If we are continue coming to Christ running, coming to Christ running, coming to Christ running, everything uh, would have been fine. But you know, many people, they have passion and zeal and desire and they run to Christ at the earlier time. But now for the rest of their lives, now for the rest of their sojourn here on earth, they do not keep running passionate about Christ, wanting everything of Christ. And then we're told, and he kneeled to him. He submitted to him. He kneeled, he knelt down. That is the challenge with people. They come at the first time, they submit, they bend, they kneel, they hold him high. But in their lives, they do not keep kneeling preaching unto him all throughout their lives. That's the problem with many people. At the beginning, at the commencement, when they come to the Lord, they submissive, they kneel down, but the kneeling does not continue. And ask him. That's the problem. They do not keep on asking the Lord, I need, I want something eternal. I want something unsurpassable. And he asked the Lord at the beginning. He didn't keep on asking only the Lord. That's the problem with many of us. Because at the first time when we came, we're so zealous. We're on. And we will not look at anything. Only run to Christ. And then we kneel down to him. We say, you are Lord. You are master. You are the creator. But many people, after that initial time, they don't continue. They were asking, he was asking, he said, good master. If we could continue like that and understand that this is a tip, if something is delayed, if he's still looking at us and watching what will happen, we know he is good all the time. If we can have that concept, whatever is happening in our lives and understand that this and the good master will do well. But many that are forced shall be last. Why, Lord? Because after they started following and they gave all and committed all, it came to what they had not backsmitten. They were still following after the Lord. But now they were no more giving everything from their heart at the beginning for your said mark go and then we took off and then we were running and running beyond and above other people we were looking at the time and we were looking at the circumstances and then we were slowing down until the people that were running slow 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 before they gathered strength they gathered fire they gathered power and they shot through and they ran ahead and they kept on running ahead of us and we see them now they're running ahead of us we don't mind let them run. After all, for all these uh, many years have been run, it will let, let them run. Let them run. You can make your choice. What do you want to be? How do you want to be when you get to the kingdom of God? Do you want to remain slow 
and sluggish and last because, you know, the road is too hard for you. Or do you want to say he's coming? What remains is not as much as what has gone before. And therefore, whatever tiredness and whatever weariness, I'm going to pray and wait on the Lord so that I receive strength and power. And then I will mount up with wings as eagles. And I keep running the same speed or even greater speed that I had before. I keep on running. You remain false. You'll be false. And when we get to heaven, you'll be false in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, here am I. I will keep on following. Tell the Lord, here am I. I will keep on following. Tell the Lord, here am I. I will keep on following. It is time to pray now. Wherever you are, globally, pray and seek the face of the Lord. Lord, here am I. I will keep on following. That should be your prayer. That should be my prayer. We thank the Lord for this timely message that came to us. The church is clear. Keep running. Keep following. Keep submitting. Keep kneeling. I keep asking the Lord. I will keep following. Pray that God will help you to keep following. This message calls for self-examination. Examine yourself. Compare your passion of earlier time to your present state now. Can you say the passion is still there as before? Can you say the fervency and the zeal is still there as of the earlier years when you started? I will submit you today as of the earlier time. Do you have the concept of asking and listening to the good master? Are we slowing down now because of circumstances around us, because of challenges around us? Brethren, we have been clearly taught from the word of God. We are an anointed servant of God. That what remains is not as much as what has gone before. So let's pray for renewed power and strength to keep on following. Is it time to pray now individually? Seek the face of the Lord. Pray that God will quicken us and strengthen us to continue to run the race to the end. Pray for increase in God's grace upon every one of us to keep following the Lord till the very end. Pray for the spirit of total submission among us. That the Lord will help us to submit to him and to the leadership of the church in every area of our lives. And let us pray for the outpouring of spirit of prayer and intercession upon us. Because if we cannot pray, then we cannot do much in the kingdom of God. And we thank God for the privilege of GCK, the vision God has brought through our Father in the Lord that's causing revival globally. And so let's pray that the God will continue to bring revival globally through the GCK, especially as we prepare July edition of the GCK. Pray that this July edition of GCK there will be mighty revival globally. Pray for the continuous flow of anointing and power of God upon his servant, our Father in the Lord. And there will be mighty revival during the GCK 
all over the world. And finally, let us pray that the Lord will prepare us and make us ready to finish strong. In Jesus' name, we we'll pray. Our Father, we thank you because of the great privilege of learning at your feet today through your anointed servant. We have seen ourselves in the mirror of your word. And Lord, we are saying that in any area where our commitment, our consecration, and our zeal, which we had in the earlier time, has faded away, Lord, the honest prayer, the Lord help us, strengthen us, and bring them back in our lives in Jesus' name. Oh, Lord, we pray that as I've seen example in our Father in the Lord, we'll be like Father, like the children. And the Lord give us the grace to finish strong. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. Amen. Edge. Father, we thank you for our Bible study. Thank you for bringing us here so that we can learn the mind of God, the purpose of God, and the preservation of the Lord. We're asking, Lord, that as we come to the study today, that you enlighten us. You show us your word, your will, the interpretation, the application to every heart, every life, in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, you quicken us and revive us. Make us come alive as a result of what we are learning from your word, because your word gives life. We pray, Lord, that every one of us today will benefit from everything we're learning in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the people of God said, God bless you. Consider we're coming to a Bible study tonight in Daniel chapter 3. And Daniel chapter 3, we're reading from verse 19 now. You understand? We're in this chapter 3. We're looking at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And we're looking at the grace of God in their lives, the courage in their lives, and the conviction that they had that they were able to stand when a great persecution came against them, a kind of persecution nobody had experienced before this time, and yet they were able to stand. The reason we're learning this is so that any persecution that comes to us anytime, anywhere, in here, out there, we will stand in Jesus' name. Open your Bible and look at Daniel chapter 3. We're looking at verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, and the form of his peace changed again, Shedrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should eat the furnace uh, one seven times more than it was wont to be. Heated. Uh, that's the beginning of the passage we are looking at today. The message is God's preservation of his own in the fiery furnace, a furnace of fire, because of persecution dreamt out and, uh, you know, planned out by Nebuchadnezzar, the king, the emperor of the land because was very angry furious because they were not going to worship his idol and yet as the people of god were faithful as shaitan peshach and abednego were faithful the lord preserved them if we are faithful and we also walk in faith and we live in faith and we endure by faith there will be preservation for us He'll give us the grace every time in Jesus' name. We're looking at three points as we look at the passage of today. Number one is the persecution of the righteous in full fury. 
Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury. And because of that fury, because of that indignation, because of that anger against them, because they will not subject themselves, they will not submit themselves into the, to the idolatry introduced to them, was full of fury. And persecution came on the righteous. Number two, we're looking at the preservation of the righteous by our faithful father. He's watching over us. He's giving us promises that when we go through the fire, he'll be with us. We go through water, he'll go with us. He'll be with us and you remain faithful because the God of heaven looks at everything that goes on on earth here. He is omnipresent, he's omniscient, he's also omnipotent, he has all the power and he's everywhere present and he can see when you are in trouble in deep waters, he can see you when you are going through the fury of the emperors in any land. He can see you and he protects its own. That's why we have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego preserved in that furious uh, persecution because our God in heaven and the Father of our Lord Jesus and our Father is always faithful. We're looking at number three now. After the persecution, after the preservation, and he kept on living, and the persecution did not take anything away from them. It added to them. They had promotion. They had exaltation. They had lifting of number three in the promotion of the righteous for further fruitfulness and for the usefulness. We're looking at number one. Number one is the persecution of the righteous in full fury. We're looking at Daniel chapter 3 verses 19 to 23. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury and the form of his visage and appearance was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heed the furnace uh, one seven times more than uh, it was wont to be heated. That is, they should increase the temperature by uh, they should multiply by seven, make it very, very hot, as hot as the anger as hot as the indignation, as hot as the, in, as the fury of the second. Look at verse 20. It says in verse 20, and he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning furry furnace. It tells us in verse 21, and it says then, these men were bound in their coats, their hosing, and their hats, and their other garments, and they were cast into the midst of the burning furry furnace. Verse 22. Verse 22 says, Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the, the flame of the fire slew those men that took off Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Verse 23. And then it says, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning, very furnace. The persecution would divide this part uh, to three sections. Number one, the temporary persecution of the righteous. The, uh, the persecution was temporary. It's not going to continue forever. In fact, as they were thrown into the fire, uh, they could have been born to death, but sudden death and sudden glory. If they had died, they would have gone to heaven and the persecution would still be temporary. They didn't die because God protected them and their staying in that fire was still temporary as the Son of God came and protected them and fellowshiped with them. And if Kadnissah himself came and called them out and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the servants of the living God, 
come out and he came out the persecution was temporary whatever you are going through it's temporary and you can cast forth your mind and see the end of that persecution the temporary persecution of the righteous number two is the tireless perseverance of the refined the new the fire will refine them will purify them will forge them persecution purifies us persecution refines us and because we know it's for our refinement we know it is for our good we know it is for our purging we know it is for our righteousness that he, whatever impurity is still in us and whatever um, kind of the doors of the world the attitude of the world is still in us it's the persecution that will forge and purify because of that we're persistent and we persevere the tireless perseverance of the refined number three is the timeless perdition of regal revengers that he is the people who are fighting on the side of Nebuchadnezzar and they support Nebuchadnezzar and they support the persecutors and they support the reason why Nebuchadnezzar was persecuting the righteous regal royal related to the king revengers they did have any problem with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego the only problem they had is that they didn't obey Nebuchadnezzar and when Nebuchadnezzar said hefty men and great men powerful men courageous men bind them up and cast them into the fire these supporters of the chief persecutor revenging on the side of Nebuchadnezzar they were burnt to death by the flame, the timeless perdition of regal revengers. Let's look at number one. Number one, we're looking at the temporary persecution of the righteous. We're ready it already. Now, verses 19 and 20, because uh, they will not submit, Nebuchadnezzar was furious now not only Shadak, Meshach and Abednego the rest of us as we are born again and you begin to live the new life if any man be in Christ is a new creature you don't walk with the people you used to walk with they'll say why I'm born again ah, you don't eat the same thing and drink their alcohol anymore but why I am born again you don't smoke the secret you used to smoke with them why I, I am now born again. You don't uh, dress the way that you, you used to dress for them, but why? I am born again because of that. They too, like Nebuchadnezzar, because you're not to worship the idol of fashion and the idol of, um, you know, whatever principle practices are there in the world, because you become different now. That's why persecution comes. It says in First Peter chapter 4, and I'm reading there from verse 12. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange things happened unto you. Sometimes when persecution comes, we think this is strange. What have I done to deserve this? Why is Nebuchadnezzar doing this against me? Why is the God of this world with his servants? Why are they doing this to me? We think they are strange, strange happenings, strange oppression, and strange trial, and strange temptation, and strange situation. Even the people that you thought, no, they won't do this to me. That's my relative, and you know, they love me. Because you have given yourself to the Lord totally now, and yielded to the Lord in righteousness. They are angry. They are angry at you, not because of you, but because of your new life. Your new right, 
righteousness that the Lord himself that he has made possible in your life. That's the reason why the persecution is saying, that's why it says, beloved children of God, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, is to try your faith, is to try your conviction, is to try your resilience, is to try your stability in the Lord, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, But rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye shall be glad also with exceeding joy. Verse 14. Verse 14 says, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, the name of Christ were saved by the name of Christ, were healed by the name of Christ, were delivered by the name of Christ, were live and walk, whatever ye do, do all in the name of Christ, because now we're committed to that name, we're dedicated to that name, we're walk by that name, we live in that name. Because of that name, that's why the persecution is there. It says, for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. It tells us in verse 15, verse 15, but let none of you suffer as a murderer. Remain righteous, remain holy, remain godly remain a new creature so that the persecution is never because you're a murderer the persecution is not because you're a thief nor or as a thief or as an evil doer or as a busy body in other men's matters it says clear yourself from other men's matters you have enough load to carry you have enough things to think about. You have enough life to live. You have enough challenges you should be thinking about. So don't poke nose into the lives of other people. And then they say, well, what concerns you with that? And then they not persecute, they punish you because you put uh, your mouth, your eyes in their matter. It says, as we suffer, the persecution should not be that we are busy bodies in other men's matters. And then in verse 16, verse 16 says, Yet if anyone, if any man suffer as a Christian, as the righteous, as a believer, as a person is a new creature and his life is totally turned around, yet if any man suffers as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're looking at verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3, we're looking at verse 12. Yea, yes, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Make up your mind. Because all, anywhere, anytime. All that will live godly in the first century, in the 21st century, all that will live godly in the early church and the present day church, anyone that is born again and it will live godly. And he says, I know, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I'm going to be holy because God commanded it. I'm going to be holy because I'm a child of God like the Father, Heavenly Father. So is that the sons and daughters as God is holy. I'm going to be holy. Anyone that will live a godly life shall suffer persecution. Anyone that is going to be committed to Christ, consecrated to the Lord, living the crucified life, even the people that say that they are Christians, they will say, why is he so godly? 
What is he carrying on? A peculiar conviction. And he's living a life that is totally different. What is he doing evangelism as if he's the only one that is going to win the whole world? Anyone that is totally committed to Christ and he walks after Christ, he lives, he eats, he dresses, he prays, and he endures like Christ. Anyone that is going to lift up the glory of the Heavenly Father like the Lord Jesus Christ. Anyone in any century, in any denomination, any church, any fellowship, anyone that is going to live godly will suffer persecution. Look at verse 13. Verse 13 says, but evil men like Nebuchadnezzar, evil men like those that tied of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and threw them into the fire. And that evil men and seducers, seducers, they'll try to seduce. Okay, I'll give you the second chance to worship my idol. But if you don't, if you don't reconsider your stand, I'll throw you the same hour into the furry furnace. And who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? They will try to seduce. And when you resist their, uh, their seduction, when you resist their enticement into doing the evil, when you resist their lust, and you resist, they are trying to catch you with their argument or their flesh or anything. It says they will, uh, they will persecute. It says, and they will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. In verse 14, it says in verse 14, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned. Continue. You've learned about salvation. Continue. You've learned about sanctification. Continue. You've learned about one man, one wife. Continue. You've learned about all that was scattered about the went everywhere preaching the word. Continue. You've learned about the purity of life and the difference you ought to make between the clean and the unclean, between the world and the Christian. And you keep a separated life, a sanctified life, and you keep a life that is totally different from the world. It says everything you have learned. You have learned about the power, the power that comes upon our lives and then that power propels us to do the will of God. And you are sold to the will of God, committed to the will of God every day and every time in your life. It says continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom that was learned to them. Let's come to number two here. Number two, we're looking at the tireless perseverance of the refined. He refines us. And the goal of the Lord in bringing us to himself is so that our lives will be totally different from what we were in the past. We come to the Lord and then he purges our lives. After pardoning us, he purifies our lives. He refines us and makes us better than we ever were in our lives. And then, after he has saved us, after he has made us righteous, he's revived us, he's restored us, he continues and continues. And the refining of yesterday, of yesteryears, is not so here. Even today, he's still refining our lives because it's our refining. And because of that, he allows whatever comes into our lives. He knows, he knows, he knows what we're going through. And yet, all things work together for good. The actions of the devil, the actions of the persecutors, and we understand God is not sleeping, and God is not asleep. He knows what you are going through. Why does he allow this? He says that there is something yet to remove. There's something yet to refine. That's the reason that you say, since God knows, and since God has a purpose in doing what he's doing, in allowing what he allows in my life, which I don't understand. He say, I say because of that, I keep on persevering, I keep on enduring so that 
finally you'll endure to the end we're looking at daniel chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 21 daniel chapter 3 verse 21 then these men were bound in their coats and their hosing and their hearts and their other garments and they were cast into the midst of the burning very funny. The Lord knew what he was going to do. Of course, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were not in the council of heaven. They couldn't have known that the Son of Man, the Son of God, the fourth one that he woke up, they couldn't have known, but God knew. And so God was watching. The only thing they had to do is to be tireless and to be persevering. And then it says, it said they were cast into the midst of the burning furry furnace in verse 22. Verse 22, and, and it says, therefore, because of the king's commandment, that was urgent and and the and the furnace exceedingly hot the made the flame of the fire that came out of the you know the furnace through the opening through with there to throw they were to throw shit that meshach and abednego slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then in verse 23, it says, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the burning of furry furnace. And hey, look at Malachi chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 2. So we understand why God allowed this. It says, But who may abide? the day of his coming and who shall stand when he appeared for he is like a refiner's fire and like the fuller's soap in verse 3 verse 3 says and he shall siege as a refiner and purifier of uh, of silver and uh, he shall purify the sons of levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the lord an offering in righteousness the fire actually didn't burn their body didn't burn their hair didn't burn their clothes only the court that nebuchadnezzar had commanded they should tie them in that one bunch of the things that would have impeded their movement and their progress all that burnt up but they themselves they became free they could stand they could walk and they could interact and fellowship with the lord jesus christ who came in his pre-incarnate form to fellowship with them refining refining uh, when you look at your life and you see what you go through and what you used to be how you used to act how you used to react the things in life that God has permitted, like persecution. You didn't understand, but those things removed the past kind of reactions and responses and everything you used to do and the way you used to talk and you used to, the way you used to look moody whenever something crossed your way. All those things are removed because of the refining agency of God in our lives and we keep on persevering look at matthew chapter 24 and we're reading there from verse 12 matthew chapter 24 we're reading from verse and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold when iniquity abounds those people that uh, you know make the iniquity to abound they will not like they will not love they will not appreciate you because you are not part of the iniquity you are not going on with the iniquity because of that they will persecute you they want you to join them they want iniquity to abound but you say no i will not be part
charge of that system of iniquity. Now you'll be persecuted, but you have to endure. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. He that shall endure. You keep on persevering and you are not tired. You are tireless. A person who receives evil so that the kind of the refining of the Lord will be complete in your life. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. Who are the people to preach the kingdom? Uh, the gospel of the kingdom, the people that are being persecuted, the people that will not give up, the people that will say, despite Nebuchadnezzar's fire, we're still at every opportunity, every chance we've got, we're still going to be, be preaching the word of the Lord. Who were the people that preached the gospel of the kingdom in the early church? They were the people that were persecuted, the apostles that were persecuted. The persecution was there and the proclamation of the gospel remained there. At the same time, those were tireless persecutors. You would have thought that the persecution...